How's it going guys? Today is Thursday, January 28th. Today, today we're going to be looking at a few charts, GME. We're going to go over the broad market. How's it going? This is Patrick, you're trading with Prime. So we're not gonna spend a lot of time with GME, just I wanted to touch on a few things. I've had quite a bit of questions these last couple of days, everything from why we saw this rally to short squeeze, a gamma squeeze, options trading on this on this name. Um, I'm not gonna get in, dive into too much of that. I just wanted to touch base on it really quick and then we'll get into the broad market and kind of see where I see the broad market going. Um, and so the first thing is I want to express to, to the people that have lost money, um, you know, and, and for this video, I apologize if, if, you know, emotions can run high, especially if you're losing money. Um, emotions can run high if you're, if you're winning and you're making a lot of money. But there's a reason why I talked about this name in the last video, which I believe was on Monday or Tuesday. Um, you know, a lot can happen and there are a lot of variables that are at play. And, and so I don't want to dive too much into those, but I am going to say that um, it was inevitable that this was going to happen. And I, I have to be frank. I have to be honest with you guys, because especially since I'm getting a lot of questions. So I wanted to start off by first saying, I apologize if you've lost money. Uh, you know, I see a lot of talk going around about Robin hood and let's ban Robin hood and it's all Robin hood's fault. And I don't see a lot of talk about other brokerages. Robinhood is not the only broker to restrict trading. Uh, I believe there was like three or four brokerages that uh, brokerage <clears throat> um, accounts that restricted trading. So maybe you can't buy the stock, but you certainly can sell it. And again, I apologize if I don't have all of the information. So for those of you who lost money, maybe there was some, it was really hard to get out of the trade because liquidity wasn't there and it was really hard to sell the position. Um, but we did talk about this in the last video and there's a reason why, in my opinion, it's not a very wise investment des decision to just put a bunch of money into a stock that's already rallied crazy prices, like astronomical prices. And I'm going to be frank, I believe that Robinhood and all the other broker brokerage, um, they what they should have done was they should have restricted the trading back at 30 or $40, $50, $60, but they waited till they got to shares got above $500. And then all of a sudden they want to restrict it. In my opinion, they should have done it a long time ago. Now, do I want to see institution hedge funds blow up? Prob yeah, I'm, I'm fine with that. Do I think it's good for the market? I, I don't know. I don't have an answer to that. We can throw blame out there. We can blame the other person. We can blame the, the um, whoever your broker is. That's fine, but at the end of the day, we are responsible for our own financial. We're re, we are responsible for our own finances in the market. I'm gonna get off my soapbox in one second, so so don't don't go away. We'll get into the broad market, but we are responsible for our own trading. When I have friends in the last two or three days that that I rarely talk to or that I talk to on occasion, hitting me up, knowing that I trade, asking me if what I think at GameStop or all these other companies. Do I think it's wise to put my money in these companies? And my answer for the most part has been the same all along, which is I don't think it's very, very wise, but yes, it can certainly go to a thousand. It can definitely go to a thousand. Do I think there is a trade there? I don't think so. Risk, risk versus reward is not there. And I said it in the last video that that one day uh, we're going to have a down 40%, down 50%, down 60%. So today's high is 483 uh, to the low of day is down 70%. So I didn't expect it to be this violent that fast, but that's the result. Now, yes, that could be because Robinhood restricted trading and which made it so there's not a lot of buyers in the market. And if there's not a lot of buyers in the market and there's only sellers, of course, this can definitely have an impact. I do see that the bid and ask is up at, at uh, 261 after hours. I believe there's news possibly with Robinhood um, allowing people to buy the stock again, I think on Friday. So I'm going to get off of this. I just wanted to point it out. We talked about this and um, we have to be very careful. We have to know what we're buying. We have to know, uh, you know, there is a reason why all the hedge funds were short this name. We, ha we have to be aware of why they were. And we also have to trade not based on other people's opinions, 
We have to be we have to trade based on what we think a company is worth and what we think it's going to do and then not necessarily take trades because somebody else says to take a trade. You know, especially when you see tweets coming out from random people that know nothing about this company and they have 40, 50, 60,000 followers, 100,000 followers or 400,000 followers, we have to be mindful of that and kind of take note in that. Um let's switch over to one last thing I do see um, here's the article, one of the articles about uh, res restrictions. And so it's not just Robin Hood. You know, you have several that were restricting trading. Um, and then I'm going to go over to, uh, you know, we see Congress wants to take part in this. The White House wants to take part in this. It, one last point to this is that is that when you see a, um, you know, you open up your iPhone and then you swipe left, you can see all the news feeds and you start seeing the names of these companies in your normal news feed that has nothing to do with the market there's just normal news feeds that you might get once you start seeing these in the news feeds and all your friends start asking you if they should buy it that's a really good indication that the top is near and so what i saw somebody sent me this tweet but i actually i'd seen this tweet and i didn't really take too much uh note of it not i'm not going to get into politics uh, other than this is uh i just wanted to look at this you know we we know we now need to know more about robin hood app's decision to block retail investors from purchasing stock while hedge funds are freely able to trade the stock as they see fit there might be some truth to that and i'm not here to dis to, um to dispute that i'm not here to say that, that there's something wrong with that you know that's an invitation to like yeah we should look into this that's fine however as long as the market has been around as long as uh, they've been trading rice and beans and worldwide, there's always been manipulation. And if that's really the case, if 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 there are companies being uh, manipulating this or people manipulating the market, yeah, sure, let's look at that. Just be mindful of: do we really believe that it's going to result in some sort of meaningful thing? All I can say is, most likely, what usually happens is it will be a law that gets passed, or it will be um, new regulations or new policies like, hey, if um, the circuit breaker, instead of it being 7%, it's gonna be, from now on, we're gonna do a 4% circuit breaker, so a stock can't rally 3,000% uh, or whatever whatever it's up. Um, this is what I wanna say to this. Before we investigate all of this and investigate uh, manipulation in the market, why don't we start cleaning our own house and go in here and start, um, investigating things like this where you see the senators that dumped so four senators sold stocks before coronavirus threat crashed the markets this was last year now i'm not saying that these guys are guilty i'm not saying they're innocent i don't want to get into that all i'm saying is you, you see this time and time again these senators sold uh stock before the coronavirus uh dump after they were briefed and you could go back and i don't it's not that i follow the hill i don't this is just the first one i popped up on google um, you could go through and do your own research on this. I could put this in the description of the video, but this and this might have already resolved. So forgive me if um, you know if for, if it has. But my point here is we should clean our own house, meaning Congress should clean their own house and focus on themselves. And I I think that if there is a smoking gun here with the stock market, sure. If you know we don't want the small guy and the small fish to be losing all this money. Yes, if there's manipulation going on, sure, prosecute it, do the best you can. But really, it's like, I feel like we should be focusing on ourselves. We should pay, be mindful of our surroundings and what we're buying. And I think that before uh, Congress gets involved, they should first start investigating their own senators and uh, Republicans and Democrats. Uh, they should start investigating their own house and figure out why it is that, um, you know, the rich seem to be able to get away with this buying and selling stock and manipulation and all that i don't think anything is going to come about with the manipulation but uh, you never know okay off of my soapbox for now that's gamestop where do i see it going from here i believe you can be short against 43 i believe you can you can you know it's not going to go straight you know straight down back down to 20 dollars a share it's going to it's going to ebb and flow meaning it's going to rally it's going to sell off it's going to rally it's going to sell off uh, eventually, yeah, I do believe it'll be back down in that price range, but who knows? It could still be at a thousand tomorrow. That's the same thing that I said in the last video. Like it could do either or I would not be surprised. Uh, okay. Off of that, let's go over to spy. Uh, feel free to leave me a comment. I know I'll probably lose some followers for giving you my rant soapbox. Um, and again, I apologize if I offend anybody. I, I really am not trying to, I just want to give a perspective, an outside perspective on, uh, whether you should buy or sell GameStop. Uh, but yeah, feel free to leave me a comment. 
under the video if you disagree or agree. Uh, so what do I see SPY? Right now we entered some trades. We took uh, some short trades today. I took shorts in IWM, SPY. I picked up SQQQ, which uh, not options. I went with the shares, um, which is basically if you're short the, the NASDAQ, you can pick up SQQQ. Um, so right now what we're looking at is we went up into this gap and we found resistance at the gap and intraday it looked a little bit more convincing. It pulled back some. We are kind of at support here. So this is what I want to focus in on. You have, you could draw a trend line like this. In fact, I have a channel that's doing something like this. And what I did is I, I chose to go short at that gap, meaning that I don't think price is going to get above that gap. If it does start closing up there on a daily basis, I'll definitely remove my short position. Uh, and as far as, as the channel goes, yeah, we're into support. So it's, I don't like shorting in the hole, meaning I don't like taking a short trade at the low at the, you know, as, as it's already sold off, I wait for the rally and then I hit the short. Uh, the same goes for the upside. If, if a, a market is rallying, I'm not going to be buying it up here. I'm going to wait for a pullback. We have to give this market credit. There's, this could definitely be, be putting in higher prices, but I believe a little bit of damage has been done on the broad market. Um, I did a post in the Discord, and again, if, if you're not a member of the Discord, feel free, the link is under the description. I did a post in the Discord talking about, um, talking about, um, uh, see, I lost my train of thought here. Where are we at? Where's my brain? Uh, uh, so yesterday I did a post talking about how I'm out of my long positions. What that meant was, well, for one, the GameStop issue, because I was, I was trading it intraday, you know, day trading it. Um, and as far as swing trading goes though i'm i want to be out of my longs is not just the GameStop, the meme the meme stocks not just them but a lot of the broad market because i saw a lot of damage was done and i'm going to go to another chart here called the iwm and we'll look into that in a second here um but yeah you could definitely take it long off support and that would have been a good long the only problem with that is that was a very bearish close it doesn't mean i would short down there but it also means I, I want to see more evidence of buyers showing up. So maybe we'll, if you are long and you are in this long, maybe we'll see something like this. We'll see some momentum build up here. It'll put in higher lows and then it'll kind of do a thing where it begins to break out. So we'll see what happens in the SPY. I'm definitely watching onto that. Let's go down to intraday time frame. I'll try to keep this video short. I know I talked for 50 minutes about uh, <laughs> uh, GameStop and senators and um, um, the House and the Senate. Okay, so we do see a little bit of after hours were pulled back here. We this could be the higher low that we're that the bulls are looking for. Uh, we will time will tell. We do want to see that support hold. If it doesn't, a, a price area to be kind of a line in the sound area would be down here around three seventy three. It's a more of a zone down in here. Um, this after hours, and if we go and look at the futures contract uh, forward slash es. It's a lot more convincing when you see this double low down here. This is almost a little bit higher of a low compared to the first one. That's a lot more convincing. I believe we had pretty bad GDP. I, I shouldn't even say that in this video. I thought I saw news this morning about having bad GDP, bad unemployment. Maybe this rally today was like a relief rally um, because GDP was bad or unemployment was bad. Maybe this rally was stimulus hopes. You know, I don't really know. I don't really trade the news. I should look more into that. Um, so if you know, go ahead and leave a comment in the video. Let's go to IWM. And this is why I was wanting to sell a lot of, or close out a lot of my long positions. I saw this trend line in here yesterday. I saw, you know, I feel like the damage was done a little bit. And right now you have a bear flag pattern playing out, meaning the chart sold off like this. And then you have this rising flag pattern. Usually it results in lower prices. And, and I think a down here, a good target, if you wanted to go long, Try to let this play out. Maybe one, I'm not going to give price targets that low. There will be support probably around $200 even. Uh, but also if it does start selling off here, you'll probably see somewhere around 197 As far as the upside goes, we do want to take out, before I'm uh, long again in the IWM, I want to see us clear $2, uh, $212. And let me zoom in one more time, kind of show you why. This is the pattern that I was talking about. This this is consolidation, right? I know it's really wide swings, like it's very it's rally sell off, rally sell off. But this this is bearish consolidation because we broke down here, we broke through support, and we broke through this rising trend line. Both of those reasons and the type of volatility that's in this highlighted box right here, that's pretty wide. That tells me there's a lot of volatility. There's a lot of indecision. Usually indecision, indecision usually, not always, but usually results in a continuation move. And this is the overall trend. Let's go. This is the daily chart back on 
back on here. You could draw, you know, maybe there's some support right here. Maybe it's a channel. Uh, there's a lot of ways you could draw this. You, maybe you'll have support like this. So you could put a line across here and say, you know what, my my, I'm gonna stay long. If you if you were a buyer back here at 154, you could say, you know what, I'm gonna stay long as long as we stay above this price area, and you could call it today's low, 207.39 roughly. Let's go to the queues. And queues, same thing, we're looking a little bit bearish here. The overall context is a, it's in a bull market, so the overall context, you're more likely to take long trades and be profitable, but this type of pattern, these, these last four days, to me is more bearish than it is bullish, but again, Anything is possible. Today could have been a little bit of a fake out. Maybe we'll rally tomorrow. I'm not a buyer in the queues again until we get back above 326.64 or, or in that price area really, which is to, around today's high. Uh, the other way I'd be along is if we pulled back here. I don't want to say 300, but maybe even at least. Let's see what price action does around 306.28, somewhere in there. Let's see what price action does. Maybe 308.32, probably probably be better but let's see what happens in those two scenarios you could go you could go long until that happens though I'm short and I'm short in the s um, long s q q q oops long s q q q this is looking a little bit bullish this is the chart that I took and you it's hard to, it's uh I don't like doing technical analysis on this chart I prefer using the cues and then this is my trading vehicles taking shares on this chart you could try to do something like say oh here's a trend line and you know, here's a downward whatever. Like you could try to do technical analysis, but I prefer doing it on the actual cues. Uh, we'll look at one more, one more, and then we'll wrap it up. Uh, X11 Financial, same thing. We we fell down. I believe this is a dead cat balance. I was long yesterday, and or I was long yesterday, the day before yesterday, but the trade did not work out, and through the stop loss, I closed the position. I believe at the open, not in XLF. I was trading BAC. And it gapped down and I closed the position. I believe this to be a dead cat bounce, but it doesn't mean it has to be. So if you are long some of the bank names, maybe there is something here on the, maybe you could say, you know, we came down into a bounce. This was a breakout area previously. So maybe it's coming in for a back test and we'll begin rallying here. There's nothing wrong with that. You could definitely do that. Me personally, I'm not long. I'm not sure it's, I'm neutral. I'm just kind of waiting to see a little bit more evidence. Maybe it creates some more candles in here. If it creates more of a, bear flag maybe there is a trade in there that i would want to take if it broke support but until that happens i just want to see what happens and i'm not long in xlf until we get back above 30 dollars 28 cents that wraps it up for this video i apologize how long it was uh feel free to leave a comment set under the comment section and like the video if you gain value